So welcome everybody to the latest uh, Joe Dell webinar. It's my absolute pleasure to be working with Justin Hunt uh, today who's going to be talking to us all around uh, his, his plugin Poodle which works in conjunction with Moodle. Uh, and we can't wait to hear all the different ways in which we can use uh, Poodle in and outside of the languages classroom. So Justin, thank you so much for uh, offering to do this. Um, I, we, we would love to know where you're from, where you're talking from right now, what time of day it is, and um, and good luck with the presentation. Over to you, Justin. Great, thanks, thanks, Joe. And thanks very much, everybody, for coming along. Uh, I'm talking from Japan, and here it is just after 7 p.m. in Japan. Uh, and it's springtime, and as you know, in springtime, it's cherry blossom time. So that's uh, uh, one of, actually, mo most people in Japan, it's their favorite time of the year because summer's on the way, it's not too hot, cherry blossoms are out, and the spring vacation is, is, uh, is just around the corner. So, yeah. Um, but I'm going to be talking today about Poodle, uh, Poodle languages, but actually Poodle in general, and how to teach languages on Moodle using Poodle. Poodle's a Moodle certified integration. There's only four of those. So uh, that means we're reliable and uh, Moodle recommends us. So that's a pretty good thing. Uh, yeah, and that's a little bit about Poodle. We're here in Nagasaki, Japan. And those are some of our customers down there. Um, you can see quite some quite big organizations, but actually a lot of our users are, are not as big as those at all. They're smaller schools and uh, as well as the larger ones. I'm originally from New Zealand, so you might have been expecting uh, a nice, nice looking Japanese man, but but you got me. Um, however, uh, I have been here for 25 years, so uh, I can hardly speak English anymore. It's mainly uh, bad, bad English and bad Japanese, some combination of those. All right, so I'm going to talk, go straight into the talk about Poodle, but if there's any, any questions that you have, just, just ask me the question, uh, or ask the question in the chat there, and Joe will pick it up and, and read it out to, to us, because it's just a, a small group today, so it's quite, um, it's quite good if you help direct the conversation in the, in the area, in the, in the direction in which you are uh, interested, or which, which you have um, something to ask about. So Moodle, uh, Poodle is two different families of plugin. There's Poodle Media, which is audio and video recording uh, in most places around the Moodle, and Poodle Languages, which is higher level activities focused on uh, language learning and teaching in particular. So I'm going to talk about both of those today, and I'm going to give you a demonstration of uh, how, how that looks from a student's perspective, and as a teacher, how we, how we drive the activities or how we make the activities. We'll start off with Poodle Languages because that's uh, actually the bread and butter activity. It's not, not perhaps the most uh, um, exciting, but uh, the audio and the video recording is in fact the, the main use of Poodle still, even though the other things are quite cool too. So the uh, one of those areas in which we can do audio and video recording in Moodle is from the toolbar. So on the HTML editor, which is in different locations around Moodle, uh, you'll have this toolbar, which has the Poodle icons on there. And we've got the audio and the video recording and the screen recording and also a little widgets insert dialogue. Also, you can use Poodle inside the Moodle assignment. So there's inside the Moodle assignment, you've got a location where you can choose a submission type and Poodle adds a little checkbox there uh, and that allows you to choose an audio or a video recorder as a submission type. And also in the quiz in Moodle, there is uh, a location where you can choose to add a question and in that list of questions, you'll see uh, the Poodle, and there, there, there again, you can choose audio or video recording as your uh, as your recording option. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm losing my voice. I'm only three minutes into the, into the, uh, the presentation. So let's go and have a look at that. This is the Moodle demo course, and this is available to anybody. It's demo.poodle.com, and it resets every day at 9 a.m. Japan time. I'm not sure what time that is in the UK. Um, but it's a good place to come and try Poodle out because resets and you can uh, you actually have a teacher's role. So you can create activities and edit activities and check the settings. Uh, and you're also a student, so you can submit them as well. So I think the first thing we'll look at is that, that one I showed you, which was the, the uh, Poodle on the toolbar. So there are those icons there, the audio, video, video screen recording and widgets. Let's add a forum post only so that we can see the editor. There's no 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 need to do this in a, in a forum, but uh, call it a forum post because that's what it is. 
And here are those icons. So in the case of audio recording, we just tap on the audio icon and then we'd get the dialogue which contains the audio recorder. If we want to do video recording, we tap on the video icon and we'll get the video recorder. Uh, screen recording, we'll get a screen recorder. And over here, we'll get uh, the widgets inserted. So we can insert nice widgets into the uh, HTML area. I don't think we'll go into widgets too much today, um, but uh, you, can any, you can come to the Poodle demo site and try those if you wish. But let's do a very basic recording. Let's do an audio recording. Pop that open and we'll record something. Hi, I'm talking to my friends. Uh, in most of them are from the UK and Europe, I, I imagine, but they've also got Ruslan from Australia, who's actually a Poodle user. And let's see how that goes. We can play that back and check how it, how it sounds. Hi, I'm, we can just insert that straight into the HTML area. There's our audio recorder. Uh, if we want to do the same thing with the video, we can do that too. So we just pop open the video recorder and <clears throat> actually, just to explain these other options, we also have the option to upload a video. So you can drag a, or choose a video from your desktop uh, into, into here. So if you, have, if you have a video that's been recorded elsewhere and you want to use it as content for an activity, you can use Poodle to do that. And it will also uh, subtitle it if you wish. You can choose request subtitles and those subtitles will become available after a few minutes. Let's just record a quick video. <clears throat> so I'm really losing my voice. So um, apologize for that. Now, in order to record a uh, video here, I have to turn off video recording on Zoom because the on Windows, the, the webcam cannot be used in most cases um, in two locations. So I've turned it off there on Zoom, so you can't see me right now, but there you'll see me uh, here on Poodle. So record a quick video. One, two, three. So record a quick video. And we can upload that. And then it's popped in, there. in the area here, it's actually quite large, but uh, we have some more control over that using the, the various players that are available in Moodle. So when you, when you view that post, it might look a little bit uh, more presentable. Well, it looks pretty much the same there. Okay. And so that's the, I guess, the most basic feature of Poodle is the ability to record audio and video into the, uh, into the HTML area, HTML editor. Now let's go and have a look at, well, any questions on that so far? Uh, not so far, but uh, it's fascinating to see how you're how you're setting it up and how easy it is to uh, make a simple video recording. But I would really encourage everyone in the chat to put any questions that you may have. Ah, Mary's asking about um, uh, uh, the um, limit length. Is there any limit to how long you can record for? There's there's no practical. There's no um. So I should say there's no um official limit, but there is a technical or a practical limit in that as the recordings get longer. The possibility that your your upload will fail for you know, network reasons or um, uh, timeout reasons becomes greater. So because the, the recordings are submitted after you have finished recording, so it all, all goes up in one in one hit. It's not streamed up. So probably five minutes is is a good number to um, to limit your recordings to. Okay, but if you if you but in fact it will go a lot longer. But in the case of students, you need to be aware that. Um, uh, they can't often re-record and if something goes wrong, it can be quite a problem for them. So we're, we're, with student submissions, I would limit it to five minutes, but it will go longer. It'll go 20, 30, 40 minutes. Um, people do use it for that. However, I, I just prefer to err on the side of caution. That's fantastic. Thank you so much. That's great. Uh, okay, let's have a look at the assignments. So um, these are Again, a really popular use of Poodle is to have audio and video recording into the assignments. And it's a normal Moodle assignment in that we've just, uh, in, the, in the settings area, uh, there's a des description or instructions for students on what to say. And, uh, and where the Poodle part comes in is here in the submission type. So you can choose an audio or a video recorder, uh, how that audio or video recorder should appear, the recording time limit. So um, let's set that time to five minutes if we want to, but if it's set to zero, it'll go um, without a limit. And the number of days to keep the file, so you can choose to keep the file for one, three, seven, 730, 365, or um, to never, uh, or to, basically this is, these are the days in which you'll keep the file, but if you wish to keep them indefinitely, 
you would put never expire. In most cases, uh, 365 is a good number. And we, we, we keep those files on the Poodle cloud uh, and we automatically uh, remove them after this time period. And we can also transcribe the students speaking. So let's, let's leave that on and I'll speak a little bit and we'll see how, um, how that appears. Okay, so uh, this is the Poodle part here. Uh, it's just added the audio recorder in the body of the submission area. And let's talk about that. In this picture, there is a boy and he is standing at the base of a set of steps. And perhaps he is wondering what he should do because it looks like a, a difficult job for him. Uh, th this is the one, two, three recorder. And this is designed so that students don't forget to um, be that final step is to save their recording. So in this picture, they're encouraged to record, then play to check that their audio um, was recorded properly or to, to hear their own speak, speaking and then to upload. And let's save those changes. This is a recording that's been done previously by, uh, by somebody, actually by the admin user. Uh, and uh, you can see a transcript there already, but our recording uh, won't be available just yet. You'll have to, uh, we'll have to wait a few minutes for our, well, our recording will be available, but the transcript won't be available just yet. But let's go and have a look at it anyway. Okay, so we can play back our audio. In this picture, there is a boy and he is, we can give ourselves a grade of say 76 or something like that. And we can also, uh, we've set up Poodle as a uh, feedback system also. So we could give the student audio feedback based on their submission if we want to. So a lot of people use this just because it's faster than typing. A lot of people in the United States in particular, they, they like to just record feedback to the students. And I suppose that's quite good. Uh, but we can also transcribe the feedback that's given from the teachers so the student can read the feedback as well as uh, listen to it. Let's save the changes there. Okay, and you can see actually that our feedback, uh, sorry, our transcript is, uh, has been returned. So this is what we see as a teacher uh, reviewing a student's submission. Uh, I did a pretty good job of transcribing my speech. If you go back and look at all, all submissions again, uh, you can see what that looks like here. So as a teacher, we get to review the students speaking. Uh, we can read the, what they said before we actually have to go into, into the uh, feedback area and listen to it. So that's quite useful. And if you look at that uh, in the video, it's, it's basically the same thing. It's just instead of audio, we have a video recorder. Okay. One, one other feature I'll just mention here, which is quite, um, Interesting. I'll perhaps I'll say that to we do the quiz. So let me go and look at the quiz now. Okay, so here is an audio and a video recording quiz, and it works very much like the assignments that we've just been looking at. There's um, uh, an audio recorder or a video recorder appears on the page, uh, and they can give their response in that way. So let me try that now. Talk about my family for 30 seconds. My family are very interesting. They, uh, I have 12 aunts and uncles on my father's side and I have eight aunts and uncles on my mother's side. So you can't believe the amount of cousins that I have and crazy family events that we have when we can all get together. And that's true. Um, and you'll notice here that the next page button has been disabled and that's a feature that you can turn on or off. But we've, we've implemented this because uh, in a lot of cases, we've had situations where students would leave the page before they properly uploaded the audio or the video recording. So it's not possible to leave the page at this point until they have uploaded their, my uh, their audio. When they've done that, then the next page button is enabled and they can move to the next page. So we've, we've worked kind of quite hard because over the years, we've had lots of issues with you know, the edge cases where students have you know, lost a recording uh, and you know can cause a lot of a lot of difficulty for the uh, the school and the teacher in that situation. So now it's really reliable um, with a, a number of a number of features that we've we've implemented to to make sure that the audio and the video gets uploaded quickly uh, and before um, the student leaves the page. Okay. <clears throat> uh, we've had a question uh, from Ruslan, um, sure. Justin, if that's okay, which yes. was. Um, yes. 
Uh, is the transcribing feature the Amazon's AI perk? Yes, uh, and we actually use a couple of different systems for transcription. So although um, uh, until recently we were, we were using Amazon Transcribe for the for these these open speaking assignments, recently we've used we're using another system called um, Assembly.ai actually, and it's much um, it's much more accurate, interesting, and uh, um, what we the the transcription that we saw before was I think word perfect, and even for non native speakers, it does a pretty good job of transcribing their speech. So um, yeah, come come to the demo site and have a go because it's um, it's really quite quite impressive. That's awesome. Um, can you also upload your own uh, audio? Say if you had an MP3 file, could you upload it in order to get the transcript of it? Yes, you can. You can do that. You'd go to uh, if you wanted to do that, you'd go to the Cloud Poodle editor here, and you go to your, well. We should perhaps open let's open a new one. You go here, you go to uh, audio, you choose to request subtitles and insert a media player. And then you go to upload, choose an audio file from somewhere on your desktop. I'm not sure if I have an audio file, <laughs> but um, it's uh, a video file. Um, you might take that. This is, this is the process anyway, but your, your file will be uploaded I think, I'm not, I think I'm uploading something pretty big there. Um, and your your audio, your video file will be uploaded and then it will be transcribed. And depending on the player that you're using, you'll see that transcript beneath the um, the audio or the video player. That's fantastic. Lovely. We, we've got a question from Mary. Thank you so much, Mary, for coming along today. It's uh, awesome. Mm -hmm. So she's written, so I guess in quizzes, uh, teachers can also record audio as part of the questions. Um Yes. Uh, can you can you control the number of times the students can listen to the question? Great question from uh, uh, Mary there. Yes, that is a good question. Um, uh, Joe, I'll, I'll, I'll stop here because this, this is taking a long time to upload. Yeah, no, don't worry. Uh, uh, we get the uh, idea. That's wonderful to know. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All good. Um, let, let's go and have a look at uh, the uh, the once player or twice player. So here we have uh, this is uh, here's an audio twice player. So uh, in this player, Mary, we've we've uh, configured it so that the Audio can only play twice, so let's let's play it once and play it twice and see what happens. A B C D E F G. Okay, plays once, plays twice. A B C D E F G. Okay, uh, and now that will no longer play. If we go and have a look at what that looks like in the uh, in the settings. Okay, that's um. Okay, that's one way of doing. It. There's a better way of doing that actually. So let me just show you how we do that uh, in a different way. So let's record an audio here. Listen very carefully. I will say this only twice. Upload that. Okay, so there's our audio player. And if I go to my widgets, and I will choose here the twice player. I'll, do, I'll choose the, uh, the multiplayer, hold on. There's so many here, but... Uh, I'll choose the cam play count, I'll set that to two, insert, and then I just sandwich that, probably should have put the other, in the other um, order, actually I should have inserted those multiplayer tags and then put the audio on the page. But when we, when we display this now, we'll see the same thing, the twice player, um, but it's a bit easier to see how that would have uh, been created. Okay. If I wanted to make that uh, a three times player, a thrice player, if you want to make, make up a new word, there. It's now a three times player. Okay, so that's that's how you would insert um, an audio player on the page in a quiz that uh, the student could listen to just twice or once or three times. Awesome, that's great. Thank you. We haven't got any, any more questions so far, but um, I'd love um, some more questions in the chat. But this is uh, this is great stuff. Thank you so much so far for showing us some of the things that Poodle can do. Yes, no, no problem. So let, let's go back to our um, uh, turn my video back on. So you can see me. Let's go back to our uh, little slideshow, and I'll move on to the Poodle languages part of things, which is, I think, quite interesting. So there are four plugins in the Poodle languages pack, and one of them is Read Aloud, one of them is Word Cards, one of them is Mini Lesson, and one of them is Solo. So 
We'll go through and have a look at those plugins now, one by one. I think, excuse me, the first one there will be Read Aloud. So Read Aloud, the student has a passage to read and we, uh, we listen to what they say and we compare the transcript of their speaking back against the original passage. And then we see which words they got correct and which words they didn't get correct. And this gives the students uh, practice in reading and it also allows us to assess you know, who's reading well and who's not reading well. Um, this is really quite popular. People use this like quite heavily and I guess it's assigned as kind of out of classroom use because um, it's automatically graded and they can, they can get results from students um, without having to spend a lot of their own time. But it's a really good way for students to practice speaking. Uh, there are four modes in the, in the session. There's a listen mode where you listen to the passage read aloud. There's a practice mode where uh, you, you, you practice line by line, you listen to the line and then you practice. There's a shadow mode where you read as you are listening. And finally, there's a, there's a read mode where you read completely with any, uh, with no assistance. And that's the, that's the portion that is graded and um, the student gets the most feedback on. It also works in different languages. So there it is working in Russian. Um, which I know Mary, Mary's a, a Russian student. I was also a Russian student, although I've forgotten most of it. I try to speak, uh, if I try to speak Russian now, Japanese comes out, would you believe? Um, well, let's go and have a look at that, uh, what that looks like in real life. So we'll take this, this one here, read aloud the lion. And we've just got the three modes enabled, listen, practice, and read. So let's uh, try listening first of all. In a forest there lived a lion. He had grown old and could not run fast anymore. As days went... Uh, now after the students finish listening, they can practice reading uh, line by line. In a forest there lived a lion. In a forest there lived a lion. He had grown old and could not run fast anymore. If I make mistakes, it'll, uh, it'll, it'll hold me up. He had grown weary and could not run fast anymore. He had grown old and could not run fast anymore. He had grown old and could not run fast anymore. As days went by, it became more and more difficult for him to hunt. And we'll stop there. <clears throat> so on the final uh, phase, the read phase, the student reads the passage uh, with, with, with no assistance from the, the model audio. In a forest there lived a lion. He had grown old and could not run fast anymore. As weeks went by, it became harder for him to hunt. One day while he was wandering through the forest in search of food, he came across a cave. So here we, we actually set a time limit there because originally this was designed as a diagnostic tool for actually for dyslexia. And the idea is that the students were given um, just 60 seconds to read and the passage was way longer than they could read within 60 seconds. So we could tell who was reading um, at different rates. And that, 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 um, that system still exists, but you can, you can set the time limit to be open. So there's, it doesn't finish until the student finishes, but one or two minutes is probably a good time for reading. Uh, the longer reading takes a little bit longer to, to be processed, and so um, that'll be finished in about uh, 10 seconds, so let's see how that goes. But usually if, if a student's reading for, for a minute or two minutes, it might actually take one or two minutes for the, uh, the reading to come back. In this case, it's ready pretty quickly. Okay. Okay, so I picked up a, a few of my mistakes. I, I made some deliberate mistakes over here and uh, didn't, didn't catch what I said here. Uh, the number of words per minute that I read at, the speed, my reading speed was 126. My accuracy was 82%. The grade uh, set is 100 because we set a target words per minute and that's how we give the reading a grade. Originally, we didn't think we needed a grade. We didn't think it was the kind of thing we'd, we'd have a grade in the grade book for. Uh, but that was not the case. Many teachers said they wanted the grade. So we've added that. So uh, in the, you would use um, your judgment to, to set a target words per minute that was realistic for your students, and then they would be measured against that target. 
In this case, we had nine mistakes. But from a teacher's perspective, um, they just get, they can see this, this big long list of all these students who have done the readings, uh, the, their words per minute scores, their accuracy, grades, and if they want to drill down and see what actually happened in that location, they can do so. And uh, let me see, I'm going to, uh, this is what I've actually just done. Let's go and have a look at that. Okay, so I can tap on a word in spot check mode and just see what the student said in that location. As weeks went by, oh, I okay, said, well, that was, that was in fact, you know, not okay. Um, how about here? Forest in search of food. I think, well, that was actually okay. So I'll mark that correct. Forest in search of food. I'll mark that one correct too. Okay, so I can manually override the AI settings if I want to. But in fact, I think a lot of teachers uh, just accept what the, uh, what the AI has graded the, the, the student's response as. So let's, let's go and have a look now at how we would create such an activity. So let's, um, I think that's interesting. So we'll put our course into edit mode. And I have, oh, it's going to read aloud. Um, we've had a question from Jennifer. How accurate? How accurate is the AI grading? What would you say out of a, like a percentage? Would you say it's like ninety five percent accurate, or do you have a handle on that at all, Justin? Mm, it's it very. It kind of depends. You know. Uh, well, when you say this, how can I answer this? Um, often it's it's how how accurate. I, I would say it's 90 percent plus. But some people are very concerned about correct pronunciation uh, more so than intelligibility. And this is this is a bit of a an argument that goes on like should it be intelligible or should it be should it sound something like a native speaker and uh if you some people would prefer that it was more um strict than it currently is um because it, at, at, as at the moment it will in english anyway it will by default um be quite generous and give students a um uh or mark a, a word that was pronounced a bit roughly but intelligibly as correct um, but some people don't want that behavior so I would say it's about ninety percent, but some people would go and say they would they would they would prefer to have more mistakes than um, the AI gives them. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. That's yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Thank you. And, Je and Jennifer's actually a user of Read, read Aloud, so I think she's, ah, she's fantastic. <laughs> uh, and presumably, you could run the same sort of i uh, the same sort of um, uh, uh, option in different languages. So obviously, we've seen the English yes. one there, but the the same AI would work would be able to grade um, in a range of languages. Is that right? That's right. Yeah. So there's a good range of languages it works in, and it works, of course, best in you know, the English, French, Spanish, and German. But it does work in Russian. And we've, we've got it working in Japanese and um, most lang most languages which are um, have spaces between the words. Actually, those work those work pretty well. Um, there's um, idiosyncrasies with each of them, um, but I think if you if you create a passage and then you read it yourself and you spot any things that 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 might not be going correctly, you can adjust the passage to um to make sure it's working 100 percent. That, that's the best way of doing it yeah that's superb thank you and i see jennifer in the chat said thanks that's what i wanted to know so that's perfect excellent so just creating a, a, a passage here on polar bears i prepared one and we uh set the passage language which in this case is english we can set the text to speech voice and we'll set that that's set to amy currently and also the speed of that voice and set the target word for a minute so we can adjust that so if we wanted to make it a bit um, more difficult because we're pretty good speakers. We might make that two hundred. Um, okay, let's go and have a look at that. Okay, so that should actually have a model audio, and that model audio should mark up quite quite nicely. It should break at the correct location. So let's see how it does. When most people think of polar bears, they imagine solitary hunters roaming the ice in search of their next meal. For male polar bears, at least, this is true. Now, in terms of the mark up there, that's actually done automatically, but we can change it if we want to. For We might think that this particular portion here is a bit long, so we could put a little break here. Uh, and we might think, well, this is a bit short. We'd rather not have that break. We'd rather just leave it at that. Uh, and when we go back, um, that will be reflected. The other thing that we can do is we can record or upload uh, an existing audio file. 
So if we have, if we want to use our own voice, we can just record. If you have a, a file from a textbook, uh, we can upload that file uh, in this little upload box here. That will be used as the model audio. Uh, in that case, it takes a few minutes for the uh, transcript of the uploaded file to come, come through. But then again, it will be marked up automatically here and you can adjust it. So it's as simple as that to actually make those reading passages, but make sure you read through them once or twice as a, you know, as a native speaker or as a, as, a, as a good reader first, just to see how well they transcribe your speaking. Let's kind of have a look at the, uh, we talked about using different languages. So let's just have a quick look at one of those before we move on to the next activity. That would be lovely because I'm sure people watching this will, will love to see an example, say in French, um, to see how it works in French. That'd be lovely. It's my, I, I have sometimes demonstrated in, Fr in French, but I don't speak French at, at, at all. <laughs> so no worries. Well, it, just a different language would be, would be great. Um, let's have a look at Russian. Um, okay. Now, now, Mary, don't be, too, don't be too tough on my Russian. I know, I know you're better than me. Некоторые иностранцы думают, что в России медведи ходят по улицам. Конечно, это неправда. Некоторые иностранцы думают. Некоторые иностранцы думают. Что в России медведи ходят по улицам. Что в России медведи ходят по улицам. Что в России медведи ходят по улицам. Oh, okay. Not, not, not too good, but not zero either. So, yeah, but this is, this is how it works in Russian. Please go and try it uh, yourself later on. Um, but uh, I know it's being used in French and English and uh, a couple of other languages, but for the most part, we're, we're hearing about, you know, people using it in English. Well, I'm going to move on now and talk about um, the next in the uh, in the Poodle Languages series, and that's Word Cards, which is a vocabulary learning tool. Uh, and we can, I'm not sure what slides we've got here, but this is the the, the, the cards mode, where you can, you can skip through the slides, uh, skip through the cards and just review those. I'm just, let me just move to the next screen, hang on. So the, the Word Cards gives you um, a list of words to learn, and there are five practice types. So after you after you finish learning those words or you're reviewing those words, then you get to practice them. And the practice types are choose the answer, type the answer, listen and type, listen and choose, and say the words. Uh, and uh, as a teacher, you can set which of those practice types you're going to use. And you can also use um, different word pools. So you've got the new words, which are the words you're learning today. Uh, but then you've also got the seen words, which are words that you've learned previously in the course because um, vocabulary acquisition, uh, repetition uh, is really important. So reviewing words that were learned in previous lessons uh, is important. And that's, that's incorporated into uh, word cards using this, this word pool system here. And we also have my words. So in my words, you can add a word to your, to your word pool by, by tapping this little icon here. And then uh, that, that's your personal list, which you can, um, uh, you can pay attention to the words that you're trying to, to master. I don't know what that looks like. Okay, so this is the uh, this is a set of words. So uh, one thing I should say about the word cards is it's an L1, L2 activity for the most part. So you'll you'll have the the word that you're learning. That's the uh, that's the uh, that's in the L2, and in the word the, the language or the definition that 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 you. Well, the definition of that word for your, for your understanding purposes, that's the L1. So here we're learning English uh, and our native language is Japanese. So that's why it looks like this. We've got a model, model sentence here, which if we click, it'll play that for us. It's interesting. However, it is not correct. It'll play the, play the word itself. Small. We can view this in cards mode. So we can go one by one. If I come across a word that I think I'm going to need to hang on to that because I want to look at that later on, for example, uh, state, I click on the little plus icon there, and that's added to the My Words set. I'm, I'm, I'm logged in as a teacher, so this is what the teacher sees, but uh, if I switch my role to a student, they see a slightly different view because this activity is in steps mode. 
And that means that the student has to go through the various steps to complete the activity. Um, they can't just practice freely. So on the first one, they're reviewing these words here. They can view, view it like this or in the cards mode. And when they're ready to start, they click continue. And they go on to the, uh, the practice activity. Here they're seeing the various words. They can click them one by one to, to see them, or they can flip the, uh, the entire set like that. And then they go in. So here they're seeing the definition in their, in their own language, and they have to choose which word that is. And in this case, this is business. Yeah, this is uh, provide. It's a bit hard to demonstrate all of that like that. So I'm just going to return to my normal role. Let's have a look at some other uh, practice types. This is, I have to type the word here. So that'll be, what will that be? This will be. Uh, and that's that's a type. And I think the next one is probably listen and choose, is it? Let's have a look. Listen and type. Market. So this is a dictation activity. This is actually quite good in a language like um, Run, uh, which, which doesn't have a good key, a nice keyboard that students can use or on a mobile device because they can just tap the letters. So it isn't necessary to use a keyboard. They can actually go like this. Government. I think the last one we have here is probably say the words. Small. Issue. Hand. Okay. I'll just skip through to the end here. And this is the, uh, the review once they've finished um, the step. Again, here's my results. I didn't, I didn't actually complete, uh, I think, any of these sections. This is why it looks so poor, but that's, those are my results. And if I want to go back and have more practice, now our free mode is enabled because I've completed the steps mode. Now I can practice freely. So here are my new words. Here's the words I added to my word set, which is just one of them. And these are words I've previously seen in the course, but in this case, I haven't seen any words. This is my first, my first pass through the uh, word card system. Let's just... Move and let's just have a look at the French words over here. Oops. So this is a word card set in French, and um, just going to change the settings here just a moment. So Now I'm in free mode and you can see my new words here is four. So these, these are the words for the current word cards activity. But my seen words, these are the words that I've previously seen. Those, uh, there's 25 of those because that was the Japanese set that we were just looking at a few moments ago. My, my words are still set at one. So uh, let me, let's, we can review the previous words that we've studied in the past using the seen words pool here. And here I can choose the type of activity that I want to um, Practice. So let's choose, uh, for example, listen and type. And now I'm going to be reviewing words using the listen and type practice type. So in some ways, it's Early. like Quizlet for um, Moodle in some ways. Let's go back to the introduction, go back to my new words. I can add these words to my words to uh, review thing. And now I have, now I have four words in my, my word set. Okay, so far. So uh, the final thing I wanted to show you is how to create a word cards activity. Uh, let's have a look at that. Let's call this uh, fruits. Oh. Um, we can set this to any of those modes, It'd make it free mode, but it could be steps mode. 
target language, in this case, we're learning English, but we can make the definitions for the, the language. We can make that, let's make that French. Okay, and we'll choose the different practice types. In, in, in free mode, uh, the practice types aren't actually that significant because we can choose them. Um, so we, perhaps we can just leave this as is. And let's have a look at that. So we currently haven't got any words. We haven't added any words to the set. So let's, let's add some words using the word wizard. And we said this is going to be French. So let's put orange. Orange. Grapes. Grape. Apple. Banana. Pear. And what's another fruit? Fig. Fetch definitions. So we have a we have a dictionary in Bill. So it will actually fetch those definitions for us, and we can choose uh, from the list of words to add those. For, for, we probably have grapes, but not grape. So let's just choose the words that came back and add those in. Oops. Okay. And if we go and look at our words uh, words here, we can see those words. We added that one by mistake. We're learning English and the definitions for those words for those words are in French because that's the definitions that we chose. But we can actually go to the settings and change our settings, uh, make that not French but uh, Spanish. Okay, and now those definitions have been turned into Spanish definitions. So if we use a dictionary, it's quite good because uh, we can make our activity portable. Um, for different, you know, different languages, depending on what your students or your courses need require. Okay, I'm going to move from word cards now. Any questions about word cards? Uh, we don't have any questions at the moment, but I'm really impressed how uh, feature rich uh, Poodle is. I think it's fantastic. It's great. But we, I, I, I see we've just had um, uh, Adam uh, join us as well. Fantastic, and Valentin. Okay. Uh, so okay. feel free, everyone, to put any questions in the chat that you may have. Oh, we do have a question from Jennifer. You said that these cards are use spaced repetition. Could you clarify that? Obviously, spaced repetition as a as a as a as a, um, a research theory is something which is proven very popular at the moment. Could you clarify how the the card system uses spaced repetition? Yeah, it uses it uses repetition. I'm not I'm not sure it's quite as strict as spaced repetition okay. because we can't we can't control. Um, the frequency with which students, re, you know, return to the to the activity, um, but we can control the words that they are, that, that they see. So in the uh, we have these these seen words here, and we keep a track of the words which we believe the student has learned, and the words which we believe the student has not yet learned, and we show them we we, we as a preference we show them words which we, we believe they have yet to learn. So if we look at the seen words and we take we choose an activity, for example. Um, say the words, the words that are selected for display here are words that we believe the student has not yet learned. Okay, so if there's, and in the steps mode, let's look at the steps mode. Yeah, that, that's really handy, that's great. I think that's a, that's a great use of technology, the way it can, uh, through presumably an algorithm, can work out what are the words that the student hasn't captured as well as he, he or she needs to, and therefore you get these reminders of, of what it is you need to work on, that's perfect. Yeah, and then the classic and the classic um, space repetition that the leap the mode, mode they 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 themselves manually. Oh, I know that one. I don't know this one, but here we we are um, we, we judge that for them. But here this here in the um, the steps mode, we can choose uh, choose the answer, uh, type the answer, or whatever it might be. But we also have the chop option to choose the review from the review pool. So we can we can we can put that into the steps mode so that the student is is to complete the activity. They actually need to go through the review. Um, uh, words in their words in their in their scene pool, uh, so they they must review words in the activity. That's awesome. So that's all the questions so far. Keep them coming, everyone. That's great. Um, yeah, just loving this is brilliant. Great. So uh, the next one we'll look at is mini lesson. So mini lesson. Um, this is a bit of a catch-all because we we had a lot of widgets in the earlier versions of Moodle uh, or Poodle that did things like dictation or, or, or um, speech cards, but they, they didn't capture the student's 
efforts uh, in, in, in the gradebook or in the activity completion system. So we created many lesson as a, as a way to you know, bring some of those, those practice, practice widgets, those widgets that give them um, opportunities to use their, uh, their speaking or their whatever it might be uh, inside an activity. And I think the best way of actually demonstrating that is to, to look at it, but uh, each, each lesson has um, a combination of item types, which you as a teacher can create. Uh, there's a content page, a multi-choice question, dictation chat, dictation speech cards, listen and speak, multi-choice audio, and short answer. Those are actually a little bit hard to explain, but they're quite easy to understand if you see them. So let's have a look at what they look like. And of course here. So this is one we usually use to test with. This is a, a funny commercial. That's, that, that's the content page. Let's have a look at the, the lesson items for the activity. Uh, this first one is the content page. This is where we give the students something to talk about. This is, this is the topic, I guess, of the lesson. Uh, and then we ask them some questions about what they saw, multi-choice, multi-choice. And here we have multi-choice audio, which is where the student has to speak their answer. Uh, listen and speak, which is um, much like the read aloud practice mode, speech cards and dictation. So let's go through and have a look at that. We'll watch the video quickly. Kiwi bacon. You can't help but help yourself. Okay. So now on the next page, we have a question about the video. So what was the lady doing at the start of the video? We know that she was cooking bacon. So Now on the next question, we it's also a multi-choice question. It's the same. We just choose the answer. But in this case, we can't read the answer. We have to listen to the answer. So let's listen to the possible option. She put it in the sink. She put it in the fishbowl. She put it in the rubbish. She quickly ate it. Actually, she put it in the rubbish, but I think the answer that we set here is incorrect, but let's, let's choose uh, put it in the rubbish. I need to change the settings for this. And here again, we have a similar looking activity, but in this case, we can't uh, just tap the answer. We actually need to speak the answer. So first we need to listen to the question. Why did the man fall down? And then we listen to the answer options. He ate too much bacon. He was tired. He fell over. A fry pan hit him. Well, it was actually the, the fry pan hit him, but let's say he fell over. He fell over. So choose their answer, it marks it for us. Move on to the next one. This is how we move through the various items that um, we set up earlier. And, and listen and speak. This is a rat -a -tat drill. The woman was cooking bacon. The woman was cooking bacon. She started to eat the bacon. She started to eat the bananas. Okay, like that. Okay. Um, and that's, so that's, and we, we can go, well, let's go all the way to the end, shall we? Um, this is speech cards, which are very similar to what we saw in the word cards. Or did we see those? And um, yes, we've seen these, haven't we? The woman was cooking bacon. She, she started to eat the bacon. And the final one here is the dictation. We won't do this. We'll just do the uh, one line. The here. woman was cooking bacon. We can choose to turn punctuation on or off uh, because some teachers prefer to have punctuation and some prefer not to have punctuation. Um, in this case, it's off, so it'll mark as correct even without the period. And finally, we get a nice uh, results screen. And we can check uh, what the correct answers were, what the incorrect answers were, uh, and also our score on, the, on, the, on that particular activity. 
If we have a look at the, how those items are created, let's have a look at the multi-choice audio, which I think was quite an interesting one. Okay, so it's a multi-choice question. We've got the options here, and the correct answer was number four. Uh, we, we've chosen to show dots instead of letters, so they can't read the answer. They have to listen to the answer. Um, and we've chosen the text-to-speech speech voice and the text-to-speech prompt here. And we've also set this image here. We, so we, uh, we, got, we got an image from the video, and we, and we put that onto the, uh, into the activity. And when that's displayed, of course, it's quite an, it's quite an attractive um, little question. It looks like this. Okay, so um, let's make quickly a mini lesson and see how we get on. This is Moodle 4.0, by the way. It's not out yet. It's out at the end of April. Everybody's looking forward to that. And it looks very nice. It's already, already running pretty, pretty smoothly. So There's a big, big upgrade for Moodle that everybody's quite excited about. Let's call this, uh, I should do it well. This is a McDonald's video, actually. Add. And the target language is English. We're going to learn English. Um, most of the options are okay, I think. And we have no items, so we have to, we have to add an item. So let's add some uh, items. So we'll start off with the content page. And so it's Q1. Watch the video. And we're going to add a YouTube clip. So. Here's the video ID. And we can, actually, we can actually set the start and the end seconds for that clip so that um, uh, we don't have to watch the entire video. If the, you know, some often they have like things in the video that you don't need, you only need 30 seconds of the video. So we can set that here. Let's have a little look at that and make sure it's working okay. Oh, that video is not available. Uh, normally that comes up if the video is unlisted. So if the video is unlisted, that might be why you're getting that message. Yeah, let's, um, let's go to YouTube and get a video. Okay. Well, while you're doing that, we've had another great question from Ruslan, which yeah. is, uh, is multi-choice audio part of the new mini lesson package? I do not remember it in the old version. Uh, it is a part of the... Yeah, it, it, is, it is a part of the... Um... Of the new mini lesson. So if you had if you had an older version of mini lesson, perhaps one that was four months prior to now, then that may not have been a part of that. We've added the YouTube clip feature and we've added the um, the multi choice. Uh, sorry, the um, multi choice audio and also there's a there's another one which is called um, uh, short answer. Is a short answer. Cool. Thank so, you. Uh, Here's, here's the actual clip that I was thinking of. How's that? Okay, so there's your, uh, here's your video there. And then we would add uh, some questions. So the, the question that um, Russ must have here's a multi-choice audio. So let's um, tell you what, let's, yeah, let's create a multi-choice audio. So let's say Q2, Q1, Q1. And we can show full text if you want, or we can show, um, How do we spell potatoes with an E? With an S. 
I don't know, how would Americans spell potatoes? Like that. Let's try it. Oh, what? Uh, yeah, let's try that. Okay, and when we uh, preview that, so. Fruit. Vegetables. Potatoes. I'm pretty sure the potato does not spell like that. Let's go try that again. We have to be a bit careful because the transcription will come back in American English. So if we have like flavor or flavor, they're spelled differently in, in the UK or British English and American English. So we have to be careful to get the right one. Potatoes. Okay, I got that one there. Okay, so when, when displayed, it's going to look like this. That's how we create a mini lesson. Okay, <clears throat> and the last one I'll show you is the um, Poodle Solo. In Poodle Solo, let's have a look at Poodle Solo. Poodle Solo, Poodle Solo is an open speaking assignment. Uh, so in the activities that we've seen, we already knew what the student was going to say. So we in read aloud, we have a passage that they're going to read. And in many lesson, they have you know, sentences or, or um, expected answers that we, um, that we can transcribe. But in an open speaking assignment where we're asking them, for example, to talk about their hobby or their weekend or a picture that, that we show them or a video that we show them, we don't necessarily know exactly what they're going to say. Well, we don't know what they're going to say. So we try to, um, try to build a system where we can give them an automated grade or an automated evaluation on that speaking. And that's what Poodle Solo is. So it's a bit of a, um, uh, bit of a groundbreaking activity. We haven't seen anything else like this and it works pretty well. And it's actually getting better because the AI um, features that are available now are just uh, are really coming online. So let's see what it looks like. Uh, this actually, this is probably not the best one. I've got another one here. Let's have a look at. I'm just going to go to another course which has a better, um, which has a better one. Hang on a second. This is the 14 day speaking challenge which we've we've created, and it's actually a collection of all these English, uh, all of these. Poodle Languages Activities uh, and a full course that's usable. Let's have a look at uh, a speaking solo. So we're given um, <clears throat> some target things to try and some words to in include into our speech, uh, a target words goal, target speaking time and a speaking topic. So what comes to your mind when you hear the words ice cream? Do you like it? What is your favorite flavor? Um, please talk about ice cream for one minute. So on the next phase, I record myself speaking. Uh, and then on the third phase, I'm going to transcribe my own speech. So I type in, I have to listen to myself and type in my own speech. And then we get to view a model answer, how um, somebody else, a native speaker or a good speaker might have answered the same question. Uh, well, I like ice cream. My favorite flavor is vanilla. I think it's very yummy. Sometimes my friends and I eat ice cream in the shopping center, but one thing I don't like is ice cream headache. Sometimes when you eat ice cream, your head becomes cold and you get the headache. Once I fell over on my bike when eating an ice cream because of that. Now I cheated a little bit there because I actually, um, actually prepared that very humble little um, response to that because of the next phase here where we actually have to type in um, what we just said. So let's start on that. Uh, well, I like ice cream. My favorite flavor is vanilla. You can hit on the escape uh, key there to stop the audio. Is and this could go on a long time because it went on for quite some time. So I'm just going to copy and paste 
my prepared answer, which is why I cheated. So it wouldn't take so much time. Uh, but the student actually has to transcribe their own speaking. And there's a good reason for that. I'll show you that uh, in a moment. But in the meantime, the student's speaking is being transcribed in the background so that we can compare that um, automatic transcript against a manual transcript to get uh, a score for their reading clarity, their speaking clarity. Let's submit that and go to the model answer. Now, this is also a, a snazzy little piece of AI here because this, this video is uh, generated by a service called Synthesia. And that's actually an AI um, rendering of this, of the, uh, the text that we gave it to, to read to us. I love ice cream. It doesn't matter which flavor, I like it all. If I had to choose a favorite, I'd probably say mint chocolate. A lot of people don't like it, but I think mint and chocolate is a good combination. I also like cookies and cream and rum raisin. Oh, and Rocky Road. I love that too. Okay, and we'll go to the next page and hopefully our audio has been transcribed. We've got a score, great, and it has, so that's good. So, uh, so we've got a score of four out of five, which is okay. These are the target words that I was supposed to say. I didn't actually pay much attention to those, so I probably didn't say too many of them. Um, you can see it's marked up uh, words which it didn't capture. It didn't, it didn't um, it think, it either it thinks they're mistakes or they're words that um, were different in the manual transcript they were, they were in the spoken transcript. Just expand the more attempt details. We can see it caught 65 words. Of those, 45 were unique. There were six long words, seven sentences. The average sentence length was nine. Um, okay, the target was three, three of the nine target words were spoken. My speaking clarity, which is the measure of my, um, the, the match of my manual transcript with the automatic transcript was 92%. And that all summed up gives me the score here of uh, four out of five stars. In the gradebook that actually comes as a, as a digital grade, but we can't actually claim precision at the percentage point. So we just show the students this uh, this four out of five thing. Now I'll show you the algorithm that we use to, to generate that grade in a moment. But the other thing to look at here, which is quite interesting, are these suggested corrections. So it hasn't given us too many here, but uh, this, we pass the student's transcript off to an AI engine, and that gives us suggested corrections, which then come back. And so uh, uh, if, it's, if it spots some bad English or something that could be improved, it actually tries to correct that for us. So here it's corrected ice cream as ice cream, and your head becomes cold, has become, can become cold. Uh, but actually it can, do, it can do a better job than that. It can actually rephrase something that I've written uh, in easier English or better English. So that's, that's quite interesting. There's a lot more to, to, to do there. So I think that that particular um, passing the transcript off to the AI engine for um, processing is actually something that we're going to be doing more of. But I'll show you that, uh, that grading algorithm. And it's, that's it's, very, it's very impressive, Justin, isn't it? The way that the, you're using the AI there and how it's helping with pronunciation and correction errors. It's, it's, yeah, I mean, I think this is the future of language learning if it's not here already. But as you say, it's going to get better and better and better. And particularly for independent learning, I think uh, it is it is the future. It's fantastic. We we've had a lovely question from um, from Mary, um, which mm. is I guess Poodle Solo would work well with higher level language students, uh, e.g. Uh, B two slash C. I wonder from your experience, is Poodle used a lot at higher levels, or is it more for beginner or intermediate? What would you say to that, Justin? I'd say it's more used for intermediate. I okay. think so. Yeah, yeah. It's it's um. Uh, it's using like it's using, using a lot of different contexts. So in some cases it's used in high schools, but for for the most part it's used in universities and language schools. And um, most and most of the universities, for example, the ones here in Japan, the students wouldn't be considered um, high level speakers of English. They'd be intermediate, um, and they're not always willing. They're you know, often the, the subjects they're, they're not. Um, it's compulsory the, the English courses. So they, they, they would be the bread and butter users, but it's used in different ways in different places. Um, the, the higher level learners, I think, would probably be using the audio and the video recording features in the assignments and the quizzes, perhaps more so. Um, but Poodle Solo, I think, is, is, like you say, actually more suitable for them than read aloud or mini lesson or word cards. Yeah, definitely. I, I think it's fantastic. I, I, yeah, how it can encourage you to work independently. As you say, you, you know, the classes are compulsory, but if the 
the students want to uh, improve uh, themselves independently, then th these are some really great options, I think, with the AI supporting them and helping them along the way. Yeah, well, that, well I think where this all began really was because I, I studied Russian at, at university for four years and I ended up not being able to speak Russian, you know, even, even though I'd studied it for four years. And that always, that always kind of burned a little bit. I came to Japan on my way to Russia and, and meant to, um, I was like, you know, I was never intending really to stay in Japan, but um, one thing led to another and I, I married with three kids and a, a mortgage and um, I'm still here and I never got to Russia. Um, but I think, you know, as, when I started teaching in Japan, I realized how much better the learning was here than what I had, you know, experienced when I was learning Russian. And then these, these tools that we have now for students to practice independently, we didn't have those at all, of course. Um, you know, we had, we'd have a, a speaking lesson with a tutor, you know, for 30 minutes on a Friday. And that was all the speaking we'd get in a week. But using the tools that we have now, we can speak you know, every day um, for 20 minutes if we want using, using these, um, these kind of activities that the Poodle provides and other services provide. So I think this is, this is really a great time to learn languages now, much, much more so than we've ever had in the past. I think it's really exciting and it's only, it's only going to get better. Um, there's some really great stuff coming our way, I think. Just now, just, just to get off my plate from my soapbox here, um, let me look at this automatic evaluation. So this is how we judge or how we, how we give the students uh, these three or four out of five stars. So the, the teacher can set this, but it, the default is the unique word total over the total words goal. So if we set a words goal of 60 and um, the student reads 40, then they're, they're, they're already at 66%. So that's 40 over 60. Uh, and then we multiply that by their speaking clarity. So in our case, we had 92% for speaking clarity. So our 66% 66 would go down to something like 62%. And uh, well, yeah, perhaps a little bit, a bit, bit higher. Uh, and then we're giving them a bonus point, bonus three points for every target word spoken. So we spoke, I think, two or three target words. We'd be back up to 66. Uh, we'll also give them a bonus point for any, every big word spoken. And we give them a penalty for every spelling mistake. Uh, and we so, put all that together. I mean, that's how we got the um, score that we see here. So it's not a... Um, obviously not as good as a native speaker listening to their, their speech and giving them... a feedback on their speech. But the feedback that we've had from here in Japan actually is, is really quite interesting because the students have been saying that they like it. Well, they don't like they don't like the transcribing part of to type in their own speech all the time. But they do like the fact that um, they're not under scrutiny by somebody. They're not, they're not, nobody's actually listening to their speech. There's no peer or teacher um, evaluating them. And also they like the fact that it's objective. So they don't feel that there's any rate of bias. They don't, they don't think that the teacher is you know, favoring the student or that student over them. Uh, so quite interesting. That wasn't, wasn't exactly the results that we were expecting, but um, actually the students were more positive about it than I thought they would be. So that, that's been quite good. Okay, so that's, um, I think that's the end of the discussion about um, the various activities themselves. Um, I, do, I do have a, have a slide here about um, some of the attributes of assessing open speech. I don't think we need to worry too much about that. Um, I think we should talk about uh, how you can get hold of Poodle. So Poodle, um, as I mentioned earlier, it's a, it's a commercial plugin. So it does cost money. Um, and we sell it as a 12 month subscription. Poodle Languages is, um, well, actually each of the subscriptions has a tier. So they've got the, the light or the basic. Uh, tiers and those that we, we kind of split those on the number of users per month so it's quite often quite common that you'll have um, a lot of use a lot of in, a lot of different users using poodle over the course of the year um, but actually each month they might not be the same users so to make that as fair as we can um, we just we just we just set a maximum monthly user usage user user limit uh, and that's how we that's how we create the tier here so for Poodle Languages, it's $449 for up to 350 users a month. Uh, and on the higher plan, it's up to 600 users a month at $749. US dollars. Same price for Poodle Media. And for Poodle Languages and Poodle Media, we call that Poodle Essentials, $749 or $999. Um, and if you have you know, um, more users than that, we, the, the base kind of rate is $1.50 per user per year, but um, yeah. We, we have a discussion about that. And if you're a live webinar attendee or somebody's coming in this weekend to look at the, the webinar the recording, then uh, we can give you a discount. Please contact me uh, using my email address about that. 
and I'd love to, to talk about that if you have time. And if you don't have a Moodle, we're coming out very soon with Poodle LMS, which is a hosted Poodle service. So up until now, if you wanted to use Poodle, you had to have your own Moodle site. And that's really good for some people, um, but a lot of people found um, having a Moodle, you know, getting the, the hurdle of having to get set up with Moodle prevented them from using Poodle. So that's why we're coming out with the uh, Poodle LMS. And I think it's gonna be really popular. Um, we're going to start taking on early adopters from early May. So if you would like to be a part of that group of people, then please contact me and I'm happy to um, talk to you about that. And that's, that's all from me for today. Well, thank you so much, Justin. It's been really interesting to uh, to hear all the different ways in which you can use uh, Poodle, particularly for promoting language learning. I, I love all the AI integration. I think it's fantastic. I'll just turn my video back on as well, just so you can you can see me. Um, yeah, just, just thank you so much uh, for, for showing us all the different ways in which you can use uh, Poodle for promoting all four skills. Um, I think uh, it is the future uh, of, of language learning, um, how AI can support um uh, uh independent learning the deep fake videos as well um i thought that was uh, absolutely brilliant i see we've got another question quickly from jennifer as well mm. um she's asking what is included in the languages package and what's in the media package can you just clarify that again for us justin please yes have i got a slide on that i don't think i've got a slide on that um just uh one second go on the way to the top so Poodle Media contains the audio, yeah, contains the audio and the video recording features for the most part, and the players. So we saw the twice player uh, earlier. So audio and video recording into questions and into the HTML editor and into the repositories and into the assignments, and also the players. That's Poodle Media, but the Poodle Languages package contains read aloud, word cards, mini lesson, and solo. So perhaps the, the best way of thinking about it is uh, if it's not in Poodle languages, it's in Poodle media. Yeah, that's fantastic. Is it possible for, for people to have like a 30 day trial or is it? Um... Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yep. So just go to the um, show you that. If you could clarify that, that'd be great, because I'm sure there'll be people watching either live or the recording who'd like to have a play and see how, how it works in their own institution. That'd be great. The free 30 day trial is here at uh, you just go to poodle.com try poodle actually if you go to the poodle um, website all of the almost all of the pages have a link to the the free trial which takes you here so if you just visit poodle.com you will be able to get started with a free trial uh, it's it's a few steps to get set up so you'll need to first of all sign up uh, and then take the free trial there's a big button there for the free trial uh, then you need to register your school and your site url so that's how Poodle knows who you are and that's how it tracks everything. So that's an important part of things. And then finally, you'll get your API user in secret. And then when you install a Poodle plugin, you paste in the API user in secret into the settings page uh, and everything's all, all connected via that API user in secret. Uh, and once you have an API user in secret, that's all you really need to do because if you upgrade uh, later on, that just goes, it's just added on to your account. So Poodle automatically knows that you don't need to go uh, changing keys or do anything like that. Amazing. That's that's yeah. lovely. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much, uh, Justin, for showing us Poodle. Um, I think it'll ha it'll have lots of uh, people's minds whirring with the possibilities. I I've certainly learnt a lot uh, seeing the the, the 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 how Poodle can work um, today. It's been really really fascinating and interesting. So thank you so much for the time it, it took to put to the, the the presentation, and of course to the attendees. Thank you so much as well for coming along. Um, I can see that. Um, uh, Jennifer again has said, congratulations, Justin. It's awesome to see how much you have added over the years. It's really cool. I couldn't agree more. Mary Cooch, uh, language specialist herself as well. Thank you so much for coming along, Mary, saying uh, thank you. Valentin, thank you very much, Justin. Very interesting. I'll share with my colleagues. Sheena, thank you. Merci. Uh, Nancy, I had issues joining. Could you possibly send me the recording? Ah, so to, to clarify with the recording, everybody, um, I'll be uploading it onto my YouTube channel, which is available at Jodale 100 and I'll also share the link um, with Justin, who can then post it out to everyone that registered for the uh, the session as well. So you all get access to the the link. I'll I'll try and do it um, in the next couple of hours. So UK time, it'll be sometime this afternoon. 
um, uh, and you'll be able to access it uh, uh, from there and you'll be able to watch it back as many times as you, as you want to. So there we are. Thank you so much, uh, Justin. It's been really fabulous. Uh, any final final thoughts at yeah, all? Thanks, thanks very much, uh, Joe, for organising the event and have, having me on the show. And thanks, everybody, for coming along. It was really, really good to, to talk to you all. Um, very quiet, of course, uh, here, in, here in the hot seat, but um, really, really happy that you came. And if you have any questions, just contact me um, directly on uh, justin at poodle.com. I think there's a, my email address is uh, somewhere here. There it is, justin at poodle.com. I'm really happy to answer your questions or to book a time to talk to your teachers, uh, your school or you. Okay. Lovely. Thank you so much, everybody. I'll stop the recording now. And um, uh, certainly in the UK, I wish you a lovely, as you can see, a sunny afternoon. The sunshine is streaming in uh, in the UK, <laughs> wherever you are in the world. I hope you have a, a lovely end of day. And uh, thank you so much, to everyone, for coming along. It's been a really fascinating, interesting webinar. It's been uh, it's been great. Okay, take care, and I'll, okay. I'll stop so the recording well. now.